Okay, so I wanted to do a little bit of a fun little dive here into um, an extension of C by uh, the GCC compiler called nested functions and using them particularly in the use case of you uh, like you would for a closure in programming. Um, I was running across this when I was doing some game development. I thought it was a pretty cool uh, topic. I also ran into something specifically interesting with uh, trying to compile the application under uh, uh, WSL on Windows, which I'll talk about a little bit afterwards. But what is nested functions? What are nested functions in C? Um, why were they added in GCC? And what can they do for us? And what are they really are they really good for us long term, et cetera? So, anyways, I thought it'd be fun to just kind of throw a little programming sample together of what I'm talking about. So let's just jump in here. So. Bear with me while I try to <clears throat> work some of this out here. Uh, but let's see. Let's go ahead and create a C file. We'll call it test.c. Hold on. And we'll go ahead and include standard io.h so I can print some stuff out. Um, we will go ahead and have... Um, just a main variable here. And just for fun, we'll just say, does this work? So I GCC test, run it, get an output. Let's make sure we put a closing line on the end of it. Okay, cool. So we have the most primitive C program you can have. So what are we talking about when we're talking about nested functions here? Well, a uh, function is actually defined inside of another function. But before I jump to that, let me go ahead and try to show regular functionality in C so we can make sure we have a baseline here. So I'm going to go ahead and define another function. We'll make it void and we'll call it normal function up here. And we will have this function uh, we'll just have it print itself as its name here. I love these like preprocessor constants, right? So we have this function here. So what we'll go ahead and do is run this in there. Uh, okay. Awesome. So when we compile it and run it, it says hi, and then it says in normal function. That means it ran this function. And then this function printed itself out because we use this, uh, we substituted its name into the string here. So we know this baseline for functions, which is pretty straightforward. Um, but let's go ahead and, and try uh, using normal function as a pointer to run inside of another function, which I think is really cool and really neat. Obviously, other higher level languages and things have made this um, what they call first class citizens, I believe, inside of languages to where passing functions around is quite normal. You see it all the time in JavaScript. You see it all the time in uh, <clears throat> other languages um, where um, you know you pass lambda functions or whatnot, obviously functional languages, etc. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll just create another function which actually takes a pointer to a function uh, that has no arguments and no return type called func. And what we'll do is we will just run func directly in this, right? Uh, I think I need to put the asterisk in front of it. Okay, there we go, right? So we already have normal function running here. And in theory, what we should be able to do is say run function, and I'm going to pass the actual reference to normal function into it. And that's going to execute run function up here, uh, which will run normal function. OK? So if we run this, all right, so we see in normal function running two times. Now, let's go ahead and uh, take this to the next level here. With GCC sp particularly, they have an extension to the language called uh, nested functions, which I think is pretty cool. 
Um, there's some debate in the communities about whether or not it's useful, and I'll get to that here in a minute. But uh, you can read about it over here under gcc.gnu.org, uh, nested functions. And really what it's, it's going over here is the ability to define a function within another function, and not only to be able to run it in, inside of that function, but to be able to pass it as a reference into other functions, and even variables declared within the scope of, um, of the parent uh, scope block actually are available inside of the function that you're creating. Uh, they call it lexical scoping. And it's been really cool to use, especially for game development when I want to pass different routines, different uh, functions to be able to run things dynamically. So what does that look like? So let's go ahead and define literally another function here. We'll call it nested function. And inside of it, we will go ahead and just run the same printf that we have inside some of the other functions. And if we just run this inline here directly, we should be able to compile and see this run in normal function twice and then in nested function. So that's pretty cool. We've defined it right here inside of the main function and it works fine and we can run it. But something else that's interesting as well is we can pass this function to another function as well. So if we say run function, nested function, compile and run it, we now see in normal, in normal, nested, and nested, which is really awesome um, for us to be able to do this. And some use cases for, for like game dev or something like that is um, <clears throat> you, you might be able to define something like, hey, maybe you're like, maybe you have an AI routine for a character and the AI routine is, hey, you know, do some job on all visible characters within your range. Um, and every character has a different range, and it has one function that it runs to detect all characters within its vision, um, and then do something on that. Well, that do something part could potentially be a function that you're passing into the vision function, saying, hey, for every um, character with invisible range, I want you to run this function against them. Against them. So dynamically, we can define these functions in the stack of the parent function and pass it into other routines and basically do dynamic operations on data that's outside of our scope, on, uh, uh, on logic that's in a completely different part of code, which is really kind of cool. We can also take this um, and show that, that lexical scoping also works. If we say, um, say we define a variable in scope here, we'll just make an integer of 100. And then inside of our nested function, if we go ahead and say, let's print that out as well and run it, we will actually see that that variable that was implemented inside of um, the parent scope is actually available within that function, which is really neat. Um, of course, this isn't part of the C standard but it is an extension in GCC, which I think is really cool, um, but potentially has, I believe, um, some implications about this working in some environments, uh, because in order for this to operate, the actual call stack of, of um, that the, the machine is actually iterating through has to make all this executable code in here, um, or all this code in here executable. And that actually has been disabled um, in some versions of Linux um, and is not supported potentially like in WSL for Windows, um, mainly as like a security feature because if you can execute code that is injected into the stack of this function, you could run a very malicious buffer overflow or um, not buffer, uh, stack overflow attacks and things. I'm, you know, I'm not a security expert. I don't know all the details of it, but I ran into this when I was trying to compile a program like this on WSL, and it took me some some time to figure out, and some guys on Stack Overflow helped me out, which I thought was kind of neat. But basically, GCC for like Linux um, can actually look at your code and determine 
whether or not you have nested functions, and particularly nested functions that are referenced by other functions. Um, and if so, it'll actually compile the code with a special flag called exact stack, which means the stack of this code needs to be an executable. It means it's, I guess, a security vulnerability if you're actually exposing this code to um, outside parties or in some sort of network fashion or something and you didn't protect it from buffer overflows and things like that. Um, you'd obviously be a little bit more risky running this kind of operation. But, you know, if you're making a game or you're doing some personal project, it's really awesome to be able to essentially write closures um, inside of C in and of itself. So let's see that ha what happens if we try to compile this with GCC saying, do not allow exec uh, stacks uh, uh, whenever you run this oper run this code, and we'll see what happens. So we should be able to say GCC dash Z no exec stack, and then we will say compile test dot C. That's compiled, and now if we run it, uh oh, the first time we hit the nested function was fine because we ran it directly, but when we try to reference it. Um, from the run function, we actually get a segmentation fault, which is really, really pretty interesting to, to think about. I mean, this actually threw me for a loop for a while. So basically, when we run it directly, this is fine. But when we pass it as a pointer to be um, executed up here inside of this function, It's steg faults with no exec stack because it's just not allowed to actually run that code and it just explodes. So it's really something interesting. Like you got to know your target environment, obviously, for this type of code. Uh, I personally still think it's awesome because I only use this just, you know, for small projects and things like that that I do. I'm not using it professionally. I'm not claiming to be a C professional, but I thought this was really interesting um, and a really cool uh, area of GCC that I hadn't really run into before. Um, but yeah, this, there's, there's a lot of potential here. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with this. Um, we can even like debug this to see what happens. So if we use GDB to de debug this, let's see if we can pull that off. Uh, let's say we want to put a breakpoint on line 22 here. I don't, this isn't an IDE, this is just Vim. So I'm using, going to use GDB to do that. If I can remember how to do that. So GDB is a command line tool to do breakpoints, which is really cool. But uh, I think we do GDB on our executed file. Uh, actually, I think what I need to do is I need to compile this with another option, GGDB. OK, and then GDB A dot out. Reading symbols from a dot out done. Ah, hold on. What was the line of code? Line 22? Okay. Okay, so we'll do a break on line 22, and then we will run it. Okay, so we hit the first breakpoint on line 22, which is called run function. If I say step, it's gonna seg it's gonna go into the function run function, and if I step again, it's going to receive the zigzag segmentation fault. No, no banana right now. Go away. Okay, so I'm back here. I had to uh, give my kids a banana. Anyways, let's, let's run that uh, debugger again real fast. So if we go ahead and we recompile this program with GDB flag and no execs flag here, and then we run GDB on the executable. And then we would say, when it was, they would break on line 22. And then we run the application. We'll hit that breakpoint saying, okay, let's run the, let's, let's run run function with the pointer to the nested function. So if we step into this, it's going to go into run function just fine. And the next step will actually attempt to uh, run the function at the, uh, nested functions address and when I do run that 
we're going to receive that segmentation fault, showing that it's actually failing to run. We don't get any details around, oh, this tried to you know, uh, run an executable stack when it wasn't enabled on the application or whatnot. It just fails out. Um, so anyways, GDB was really cool for helping that out. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and quit this. Anyways, I, uh, that's basically what I wanted to get to, uh, just to keep it short. Uh, this is nested functions inside of C, particularly with the GCC compiler and the exec stack versus non-exec stack compilation process for those. Um, I'd probably like to do a different video to kind of show this a little bit more interesting and some more detail associated with it. But anyways, um, try it out for yourself and just have fun with it.